Well, this is the River Wiley. Not a river that I fished before, but typical of many chalk streams. There are some lovely glides, gravel bottoms, ranunculus, lots of places for fish to hang out. The water is very clear and it's coming through at a nice pace. I'm looking forward to having a go at this, but it's not going to be easy. We've got a lot of sunshine today. Hopefully later on we'll get a hatch. Now, as it's a new venue, it's good to get a bit of extra information. There's a fishing hut here where hopefully people have been leaving their returns. So I'm going to go in and have a look and see what's been happening over the past few weeks. Oh, a nice little hut. And with plenty of information. Looking at this, this is very important. Here we have weed cutting dates. Now the river keepers at the various beats, either upstream, here and downstream, they have to keep control of the weed. So they cut it. And of course, if they all cut at different times, what would happen? You'd continually be getting draft, uh, rafts of weed coming down, which would basically ruin the fishing. So that all the beats all cut on the same date. You should note this, because the last thing you want to do is turn up on a weed cutting day, because your fishing is going to be virtually ruined. And of course, what I want now, which are the fishing returns. Yes, here we are, three days ago. Good day for this guy, he's had five fish. Smallest one, four ounces, best one, one and a half pounds. And he's saying that he's had them on dark, dry olive, and even a mayfly. He's also had grayling. That's a week ago, just one fish for this gentleman. A white witch. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting out and giving this a go. Better put these back. All right, I've been looking at the river as I've been coming down, trying to spot some fish, and I've seen some. The bottom here is very even, and there's not a lot of weed, so there are no real sort of classic holding areas for them. However, there are deeper gullies within the gravel, and the fish are staying down towards the bottom of that. That would suggest that really they're feeding on nymphs at the moment. There's got to be a lot of insect life in here. This is a classic chalk stream. I'm going to be setting up a light gear and I'm going to be looking for more features like this weed. That should hold a fish. There should be fish hiding under those. There's a little bit of push, a little bit of darkness. The food gets swept around to them. We need to look for any feature to benefit us. The fish aren't holding in one spot. They're moving, they're there. They're there, they're there. So we've got to keep our eyes open, keep our wits about us. I'm going to be using a very light tackle today. I'm travelling light, just my waistcoat, my waders and my reeling rod. Now this reel may look a little bit large because it's a large arbour reel. But this is about the lightest reel you could ever get hold of. I've had it for a few years now. It's a Loop Model 2. The whole thing, complete with the line, only weighs six ounces. The rod's only about two and a half, so all in all, just eight ounces. I'm going to be using a five weight line today, and the rod itself is only eight foot three on a five section. So let's get this put together. All right, this is a, a nice little five piece rod. It's uh, actually a Gray's missionary. I call it a missionary, I don't know, probably because you can carry it with you anywhere. Missionaries get about, and this rod's going to get about as well. That's eight foot three, but in five sections. I'm just lining the joints up as I go along. Obviously, work from the top down. See a lot of people putting their rods together from the butt upwards, and that does make it very difficult to line the eyes up. Tuck that right in there. Up with the locking piece. And make sure that's well in place. That's good and firm. Now you can see how nicely balanced the whole outfit is. Look at that. Now I've already got my tapered leader on here, 
because of the type of fishing we're going to be doing with very small flies, we need a tapered leader that's very steep. So it's very thick line here, tapering down to about a two and a half, three pound point. So I'm going to pull off enough line, thread up through the rod. And again, because it's on a river and I want a nice light presentation, I'm not using a loop to loop as I might do on a reservoir. What I've actually done is I've done a nail knot or needle knot threaded up through the fly line and knotted on it. So this leader is going to have to stay on there all day. I dare say with all the herbage that's around, it will get shorter. But I'm not going to be using it on its own. What I will be doing is putting a short length of fluorocarbon on the end of the tapered leader something that I can play with to change my flies without shortening the leader itself. So this is a little olive. It's got a little post on it that is CDC, but I will still grease up just around the bottom edges, trying not to put too much on the top there so that it floats nicely. And that is an 18. Well, while I've been tying the fly on, I've heard a few fish rise. Little splashy rises, can't tell how big the fish are. I've seen one better one move a couple of times up in that glide up there. So I'm going to sneak down through the bank, stay fairly close to start off with, and cast short upstream. And then I'm gradually going to increase the length of the cast so that I don't cover the fish with the fly line. Because he hasn't risen now for two or three minutes. He might have dropped off somewhere else. I'm going to get down and taste it and see. Flies fine, it's staying up well, but my leader is still on the surface. It's not cutting through the film. So I'm going to put on a bit of fuller's earth to take the grease off. I can see a small grayling, I think it may be, but he's feeding on nymphs. He's not really that keen on coming up. Not terribly interested in the dries at the moment, so I'm just going to put on a little nymph, a little pheasant tail. There he goes. There goes the fish off down over in that direction. He's decided to move. Just try a bit of nymph fishing for them. They're moving from side to side in the current, so they're obviously taking things that are coming down and only occasionally coming up to rise to the surface. Just a little size 16 pheasant tail. Upper thorax to get it down. I've got to give it time to get down. Ah! Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is a baby. This is a little grayling. The lady of the river. Come on. And then this is a very small fish. But welcome. You see, it's too young to have developed its large dorsal fin at the moment. Let's just unhook that with this little barbless hook. Does he? Oh, you took it well. Hardly got the markings. Just a small fish. She hasn't really grown it yet. Just there. The lady of the stream. Latin name. Thymus thymus. Why? Because she smells like thyme. Well, it's a start. I'm now looking for uh, a trout, preferably. The big brother. And uh, strange enough, that fly got a bit chewed up. So I'm going to have to replace it. Chris Riley, and now he's the river manager for this stretch of the Wiley on behalf of the Wiltshire Wildlife Trust. I gather this was uh, always, obviously, this river's always been a fishery. When did Wiltshire Wildlife Trust take it over? 
We acquired this half a mile stretch of river as part of the Langford Lakes Nature Reserve in 2002 and we've continued the fly fishing uh, pretty much as, it's, uh, as, as it was before that um, as, as part of a fishery concern. So people can come along to this particular area here which is its uh, steeple Langford and you have walks for them as well through the countryside not on the edge of the river of course that's only for the anglers but your other part of this you have I noticed when I came in, nature walks? The nature reserve as a whole covers uh, 50 acres. Uh, the river is the only part of that which isn't um, accessible to general public uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, one of which is, is, is the fishing. Um, the, elsewhere on the reserve there are good paths to four bird watching hides, all wheelchair accessible, and uh, whether you're interested in the birds or just want to a nice walk, it's, uh, it's a great place to come. When you took it over though, it was specifically aimed for the wildlife, so you've made changes to the riverbanks or anything, or just allowed things to go wild as it were? Uh, well we have made some enhancements to the structure of the river with the aim of uh, in increasing habitat for the fish, which has uh, benefits for wildlife as well as uh, for the people fishing for the fish. We've put in some structural enhancements, um, mainly in the form of groins, which concentrate the flow of the river water into the centre of the river. and uh, That speeds up the flow in, in the centre, uh, which cleans off the gravels and creates uh, scour pools, deeper parts as well. And uh, in between the groins, uh, silt accumulates there and the silt is valuable habitat for a range of invertebrates and um, the smaller fish as well, the lamprey for example, the larvae of that uh, lives in, in the mud. So we're looking at a, a whole range of, of uh, species. But if, if we've got good conditions for trout and grayling, it's a good um, chance that uh, it, it's a very good uh, uh, range of habitats for a range of, of different kinds of biodiversity. Water voles are seen regularly uh, along the river. Um, it does vary from time to time how many and exactly where, but uh, they, they seem to be doing okay. Also on the neighbouring lakes, the mink are, uh, are controlled in the area as a trapping program, um, and I think the evidence for the success of that is, is that uh, water voles can be seen. The fishing is quite challenging here. It's not for beginners. There's a lot of overgrowth um, of, of the trees and uh, vegetation at the water's edge. That is uh, cut back in one or two places but deliberately left to provide good habitat and the fly life that it encourages actually is good food for the fish. Um, best access for the fishing then is, is by wading uh, in, in the uh, times of year when wading is allowed. Um, so it's, it's not really for the faint hearted or, or for the beginner. Come down now to the weir pool. Quite deep water, lots of oxygen. Obviously not a lot of fly life actually on the surface because it would have all been sunk as it came over the weir. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a nymph and it's going to have to be weighted to get down in that water. Obviously the current will pull it around, push it around and I'm hoping that there will be a better trout lying down there. So I've gone for a pheasant tail with a copper thorax and a copper body. So the fly itself the only bit of pheasant tail on it is the tail and the thorax. And it uh, provides that little bit of extra weight which I hope will allow the fly to get down to the depth to fish at. There we are. I can't enter the pool from here. So I'm going to go down the bottom, enter from the bottom end, try and get out towards that bank there where I've got some distance behind me that I can cast up into the fast water to allow the nymph to be pushed down and say where well, I hope there are some better fish lying. Let's have a go. I've just greased up my fly line and gone back to a dry. Still don't really see any fish moving at the moment. So I think it's time to move on down river and see if we can spot some fish. It's a couple of 
trap down here. They're very close to the bank, just on the back of some deep water. Now, it's, I can see him, he must be able to see me. I'm just gonna try and flick this line over to him. I don't need to do a long cast, so I'll just tip it out and just pop it down in front of him. Have a little look, try again. There, that's better. Much better position. Yep, he's coming, he's coming. There. Oh, that's a nice little fish. Oh, he's gone downstream of me with the mouth open. He took the fly well. In fact, he's taken it down a bit, I think. I'm gonna have to get in the water. He's got a friend by the side of him. Oh, it's a good fish on this light tackle. Yeah, this one's probably getting on for a pound. Put his head up. As long as he doesn't go too crazy in the flow again, he should be all right. Oh, there we go. Put that to one side. And there we are. Lovely little fish. Beautiful tail. Wonderful condition. You can see the spots. Black spots there, the red spots, the beautiful golden belly, petrels. A lovely fish. Mwah. Let's see if I can get his big brother. Oh, he's gone already. Bonus. I'm just going to sort my kit out there and tidy it all back up. Look for another one. Great thing about these places is, in rivers like this, you can hunt the fish. You can spot them rising, spot them in the water, and then carefully make your way down to them. Hopefully not to disturb them too much. I've seen a fish moving probably only about uh, five yards upstream. Let's hope he's still there while I get into position. Oh, deep mud. <laughs> this is why you wear chest waders. I'm gonna have to get out through. Oh, I don't see him now. It's quite firm once we get through the uh, silt. Now, I think when I came in, I might've spooked him a bit. That's where he was. Oh, I think there was a little bit of interest then, but Splashy rice, so it's probably a grayling. Let's degrease this leader again. Same thing with this, you've got to keep that leader degreased. Every half dozen casts or so, for balls and allow that tippet to get below the surface film so they can't see it. And, uh, Yep, that fish must have moved off. Yes, yeah, so a river like this is a lovely place for perfecting your various casts. A roll cast. Let's have a look. That'll help get it out. A uh, very important cast for this type of river would be an upstream mend, which uh, I won't be doing just at the moment because I am casting directly upstream rather than across. Just allow your fly a little bit more time to be in the catching zone. And so that we don't disturb the fish too much, a snake roll is another very good cast to learn. There. So we can pull the fly cleanly off the water with little disturbance. Now, they're not wanting to play here now. Straightforward roll cast, maybe a little with a little hole, and that gets the line out nice and easily. There, and a little hole, and over it goes. There are fish everywhere, but they're, obviously this is a larder. They've got a lot to choose from, and they don't like what I'm chucking at them at the moment. I'm gonna take a few moments to show you one of my favorite knots. It's called a uni knot, 
because it has a lot of uses. I use it for tying my leader to my fly line loop. Uh, when I'm course fishing, I tie leads on with it, sea fishing, etc., to swivels, and of course, to my flies. So what I'm going to do is pretend that uh, my forceps here are a hook with the eye. There we are. That's the eye of my hook. I'm going to tie that onto my leader line. Start off with, let's turn it around a little bit so you can see a bit better. I'm going to thread that through the eye of the hook and just leave that dangling there for now because that's what I would do with the hook naturally. Oops, let's get that line out of the way. So I now catch hold of that line there and make another loop. So now effectively I'm holding three pieces of line between my thumb and forefinger. This tag end is what I'm going to thread through to make the actual knot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread it around these and through the loop five times. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And then I simply pull it together. There we are. And it forms like a noose. And I can just tighten that down a little bit and then just slide it down to my hook. And the more I pull that knot, the tighter it will get. Very, very strong knot. And you can trim that tag end off really close. There it is. Uni knot. It's getting late in the day now. Uh, not a lot's been happening, but one or two mayflyers starting to come off. We may get a hatch and just cover them with a little dry, see if I get any joy that way. Well, I've managed to catch a little grayling here. No great size at all, but she's led there in the flow. I'll be a bit careful not to lose her when I'm walking like this. Oh, 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 here she comes. Just a slippery little one. All right, stay still, darling. There we are. Beautiful little river grayling. Well, that's the end of my day on the Wiley. And the Wiley, Wiley brown trout have done for me. I managed to sneak one out and christen my new rod, but the rest, well, they must have seen me coming. I've tried everything. I've been through my fly box with grey dusters, clink hammers, Adams, finally catching on an elk, hare, sedge. But what a lovely way to spend a day. We've got a chalk stream, it's crystal clear, beautiful sunshine, lovely countryside. It's just marvellous. And the little grayling thrown in as well, just for that bit of extra interest. If you want to have a go at a place like this, you can come here, you can get all the details, on the website for the Wiltshire Wildlife Trust. Me, I've got to fill in the permit now, put my return in so that everybody else knows how not terribly well I did on, as the river warden said, a very challenging bit of water. Mm -hmm.